Hey everybody, Retro Pie Guy here. Today I'm going to show you how to set up the 8 do PCE Core Wireless Gamepad Controller with RetroPie. So first thing we need to do is take either a gamepad controller that's already been configured with our system or a keyboard and navigate to our main menu. Once we're in our main menu, we're going to go down to configure input. We're going to select that. And then you'll see here it says, are you sure you want to configure input? We'll go ahead and select yes. So now what we need to do is take our USB dongle that came with our 8 do controller, plug that dongle into the USB port on a Raspberry Pi, and then we're gonna hit the button on the end of that dongle. You'll see a little blue light flash, and then we're gonna hit this button dead center on our gamepad controller. What that's gonna do is just pair the two together. You'll get this lit up blue indicator here up here on the top when it is set up. And you'll notice here on the screen, it says one gamepad detected. That means that it is picking up the signal from this gamepad controller, so we're ready to map this. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit any of these buttons to jump into our mapping portion of this. You'll notice that when we hit one of these buttons that the title of this controller does populate into the bottom of this box. It will only populate for a split second and it'll immediately bring us to the mapping page. So I'm gonna hit the bottom one button here. You'll see it says PC Engine Pad and then brings us right into our configuring page. So now we're just gonna follow along with the prompts here and now we are only going to be using a couple of these prompts because this gamepad controller is very limited in terms of the functions and buttons that we need to map. So we'll start with the D-pad here. So for D-pad up, we're gonna hit our D-pad up. For D-pad down, we'll hit D-pad down. D-pad left, we'll hit D-pad left. And D-pad right, we'll hit D-pad right. For the start, we're going to hit our run button. For select, we're gonna hit our select button. And now A and B are the only two functions we are going to map here for buttons. So for A, I like to do the bottom one button. Now you can do this either way you want. You could do the bottom one as your B button if you wanted to. I'm gonna do it as A. So for A, I'll hit bottom one. For B, I'll hit bottom two. And now for X and Y, we're gonna skip these. And the reason for that is we can't utilize these top buttons here because they are just an extension of the buttons below them. So even if you wanted to, I'll show you what happens. If you, let's say we want to try to map X as our top one button, it says already taken. And again, the reason for that is it's an extension of the function right below it because when we jump into games, they're gonna be exactly the same thing. So if this is our jump button, for example, this is gonna be our jump button too, but it's gonna have that turbo function enabled on it. So we might jump uh, much slower with this button, but much higher. With this one, it's gonna be shorter, faster jumps. Same thing over here. Let's say we're playing a game where this is a strike, like a kick or a punch. These are gonna be our standard kick or punch button. This one up here is gonna have the turbo function, so they're gonna be much faster. So we're going to skip all of these remaining functions here on the mapping page. In order to do that, we hit either our bottom one or bottom two button just to bypass each of these. So we're gonna bypass everything. Uh, and the reason for that is we don't need shoulder functions. We don't need trigger functions. We don't need thumb functions and we don't need analog functions because we don't have any of those capabilities with this gamepad controller. We're gonna navigate all the way down to the bottom to our hotkey enable. And the hotkey enable is going to be the button that we assign to actually exit games. So let's say that we're in a game and we want to exit that game and go back to our game collection menu. Then we would hit this hotkey enable button and that would exit that game. So we're going to assign that to select. And to confirm this, we are going to hit our A button or what we have as our A button, which is the bottom one button. It's gonna load for a couple seconds here. And once we go back to our main menu here, we can hit the bottom two, which is our B button. And you can see here, just going back and forth with our D-pad, we're able to navigate through our collection. So we know that the mapping from this controller has saved and was done correctly. So we're gonna navigate over to our PC Engine collection. And we're gonna jump into a couple gameplay demos here. So let's go, we'll go right into this first one here, which is 1943. And this is a good one because it gives us a uh, good idea of the functionality of the uh, D-pad here. And we can also test out these functions as well. And you'll be able to see the difference between the regular functions and the turbo functions here. So we'll start the game, we'll do one player. And we'll advance past this. And here you'll notice that once we get control of our plane, let's hit the bottom um, two button. That's our regular shots. So if we hold this down, it does do a steady stream of fire, but let's go up to the turbo function of that. And you can see that this is a much faster version of holding it. And again, just to show you the difference here, let me uh, 
show you this one here, which is kind of sporadic. It's still a pretty fast function, but still sporadic. And then the turbo function here is just much quicker. So we can definitely, you know, get much further along. And then the other side is going to be our uh, turbos. It um, shows the lightning on the screen there, which basically is like our bomb function. And we can utilize both of these top and bottom ones. The turbo of that is really no different in this case. So that's it for this game. Let's jump out, hotkey enable, which is gonna be our select and our run button at the same time to exit back to our main menu here. And let's jump into another game. Let's do another one that will um, kind of give us a better idea of those differences in function. Let's check out Cybercross here. This is a good game, again, to test the difference between the regular functions and our turbo functions. All right, so right off the bat, let me test this out for you. So bottom one button is a taller, if you hold it, it's gonna be a high jump. Um, now, if we hit the, let me just get these guys out here. If we hit the turbo function, you can see just holding it, it does a much quicker jump there. So um, now same thing with strikes. If we hit our bottom two button, we do our standard speed strike. Now, if we do the top one, you see just holding it, it really does that uh, turbo function for us. So that does come in handy in a game like this. All right, so that's going to do it for today. That is the entire setup and mapping process for the PCE Core Wireless Gamepad Controller from 8 Doe. If you are interested in picking up this particular gamepad controller, jump down to the description below. We'll provide a direct link over there so you can click right through over to Amazon and place your order. Again, that's going to do it for today. So if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button for us. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different videos based around retro gaming. We do product reviews, gameplay demos, tutorials just like this one. Just a lot of great stuff based around retro gaming on here. And of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com.